Morena, welcome into the Punters Lounge as we gear up for a very entertaining Saturday of racing. And here on the Punters Lounge, we'll try and find you all the winners throughout the Saturday of racing. And of course, the Cambridge Jockey Club uh, out of Tadapa is where we have our feature racing, where we look forward to the Cambridge Breeders uh, at the Group 3 level, the English Sales Cambridge Breeders, and also the Travis Stakes Group 2, 2,000 metres, where two illicit is the dominant favourite. Weather forecast for you, 20 degrees, fine with light winds, beautiful autumn day. Uh, the track condition is a good three, and the running rail is out the four metres. So that's the scene set for the Cambridge Jockey Club out of Tarapa. We do have the eight races from that venue, and first race will sit down to start at 12.36. Let's head to the River City now in Whanganui for their program of racing. And we do have the eight races from this venue. First race to start at 18 minutes past 12. And once again, we do have a beautiful day here also to look forward to for our racing. 20 degrees the high, a low of eight, fine light winds. And track condition sits in that soft five with the running rail out the four metres. That's the homework out of the way in terms of our two domestic race venues. Uh, and in terms of what we can look forward to in having a, uh, a bet, let's have a look at the best back runners for you uh, out of both meetings. And first of all, Tarapa, where we do see Dubai Diva, $3.50 to $3.00, well supported in the first race for Stephen Marsh. We'll catch up with Stephen very shortly. Dawn Parade in race two, $7.50 to $6.00. Fernandi is a horse who trod Ruakaka and did the job nicely there when leading all the way. 11s into $8.00. Coat the Bone is 3.30 to 2.50. Sassy Merlot, who missed the start two weeks ago, uh, that was not her. We've seen the horse jump and put herself in the race. So Pundit thought $15 wasn't over. It's now into $11. Two Willis at 2.10 to 1.90, strongly back favourite. And Navalha in the last race, 2.80 to 2.50 to 1,600 metres. Looks to be a nice distance for that horse now in his preparation. In race number three out of Whanganui, we do see support for Never Fear, 18s into $13. Arisha Reish, well, if you like the coat the bone reference in terms of uh, the Cambridge breeders, well, this horse pushed coat to bone, 380 to 280 for that run in race four. Tabatak, who was brilliant uh, last time to the races and the start before that, is 450 to 320. And the return of Big Mike in race number seven, he's 550 to $4.50. A Hawke's Bay Cup winner, a Pakenham Cup winner, a Maui Cup winner, and he's back at the races in race number seven is Big Mike. Let's have a look at our bonus back blitz and a slightly different bonus back blitz this afternoon because it covers the first three races, but we have more venues. So we have Tarapa, Whanganui, Invercargill, which of course is a big day of harness out of Ascot Park. That's on TAB trackside too. Eagle Farm, Morfittville and Hawkesbury. So if you have your first bet with the bookmakers on the digital channels and your runner runs second, third or fourth, you'll get up to $50 in a bonus bet. So that's our bonus back blitz, but just a little bit of a twist this afternoon. A $50,000 guaranteed late quaddy starting on race number five out of Tarapa. That will be at 2.47 starts on the English Sales Cambridge Breeders Stakes over the 1,200 metres. And out of Whanganui, we do have the late quaddy there, and it will be a $30,000 guaranteed late quaddy race five, starting at 2.38. What can you expect here on the Punter's Lounge? First of all, we'll hear from Stephen Marsh. He's got a good team of runners. Has the Cambridge trainer for the Cambridge Jockey Club race meeting. We'll also hear from uh, Sam Burgesson about his team of runners from Tiako uh, and uh, the of course, big runners include Coat the Bone lining up in the Cambridge Breeders. Ellen Nicholas, good book of rides for Ellen Nicholas uh, in the CD. She takes the ride aboard Big Mike. And we'll catch up with Sam Collett uh, with her rides uh, out of Brisbane as their carnival starts to heat up. That's the River City. And let's catch up with the man that's born and bred there a little bit later on in Bevan Sweeney. And we'll also look at Travis Stakes Day out of Tarapa. But let's get straight into it for the Punters Lounge and a key man who plays a pretty serious part for this Cambridge Jockey Club meeting is Cambridge trainer in Stephen Marsh. Good morning to you, Stephen. Good team of runners. Hopefully there's a couple of winners here for you. Yeah, morning, BP. Yeah, let's certainly hope the old um, home meeting will be nice, wouldn't it? 
Well, you kick it off with a great chance in Dubai, Diva, a runner that has run superbly this preparation, Stephen, through black type races. Uh, and to think that she was still a maiden galloper going into her last start to the races and, and she got the job done there and she, she was very impressive with what she did. She's even beaten some horses that have been winners yesterday. Uh, so how she progressed out of this race? Progress really well. Yeah, as you said, she's been running in some pretty uh, top draw races. And last start, she won one great. We put the side blinkers on um, and ran good sectional. So I think the step up to the mile suits. A little bit of a sticky draw to overcome. But uh, no, she's going really, really well, and her work's been super. Yeah, this is obviously something you've been keen to get her to that that, that sixteen hundred metre distance. Absolutely. Yep. She won't. She might have one or this might be her last run for the. Uh, season, we might just give her a little uh, a little break after this and bring her back to the spring. But yeah, always uh, always wanted to get her up to the mile. As you said, barrier draw uh, a little bit awkward. So, what do you sort of want to see happen from from your draw? I think the good thing is the mile at Tirana. You got such a long run down that um, back straight. You probably got an eight hundred metre run. So just leave it to Michael. She'll go forward and up, um, and just as long as she can slot in one off, um, you know, outside the leader one one might be the idea. Um, don't want to get too far back. You know, we'd up can be on certainly in the good three can be first couple of races sort of lead and be hard to, to peg back. But you know, she'll go into a prominent enough spot. Okay, then well, let's move on to your next chances. And you've got two strong chances coming up in race number two, the open handicap over fourteen hundred metres. You have Tightline the favourite at four dollars and twenty cents. And we also see Reposa Repeater just trying to find some of those old form lines is Reposa Repeater, who's at eight fifty two forty with Andrew Calder. Uh, aboard. We'll, we'll touch on Raposa Repeater. What have you made of her, his most recent runs? Yeah, two starts of that. I was really happy. Last start, he, he was good, certainly good enough. Um, but he just, he, look, he looks super. Uh, his work's been really, really good coming into this. He does like T Rapa. Good draw. He does have to lump the 60. But look, he should just be able to sort of perch up and behind the speed. And yeah, um, he's got a bit of weight to carry. But I do think he can sort of bounce back to his old form today and go very well and what looks a pretty even sort of a field. It certainly does and no doubt the race will be set up by the stable mate who is in a in a great vein of form and especially with jockey Crystal Lindsay aboard and uh, no doubt we'll just look for similar tactics again. Absolutely, yeah, they get on very well four kilos off his back. It's going to certainly help and the good three brings him right into play to Rapa um, on this sort of track, you know, can be sort of... Um, you know, up front bias, uh, but he's going super here, as you say, like he's uh, he's in a purple patch of form, won his last two, so certainly don't see why he couldn't uh, put three in a row. Do you go with the horse with the, with the up and running form, or do you, do you believe Raposa Repeat is getting close to that better form again? I think with the weight and everything like that, I, I think you'd have to put tight line on top. OK, let's move on to race number three now, Stephen. You've got the two-year-old in this race, and that is uh, Miss Nico Bell. Now, she's a, a daughter of Nikoni who's gone to the trials recently, and it was a trial that was out of uh, Topo on the 19th of April. And I like the way that the horse fought on in this particular trial, Stephen. It was beaten by a margin of about a, a length and a half. Looked like maybe the, the margin was going to be bigger, but um, as I said, she, she fought on in the trial. Yeah, really um, improving style of filly. We're, we're certainly not expecting her to to win today. I, th I think there's some really nice horses in this field um, from six as long as she can just settle um, sort of midfielder, she get a bit of cover. If she can run top five, uh, she'll just go right ahead and, you know, she's going to be a nice three-year-old to, to follow, um, you know, next, into next season as a three-year-old. OK, then, well, just one to mark down and that's the sort of race it is, isn't it, Stephen? I mean, we're starting to try and find a bit of a line on some of these late two-year-olds. Maybe you go to the race that you've won quite a few times in the in, in the race coming up next week and those sort of two-year-olds moving into their early three-year-old season form. Yeah, it certainly helps just to give them a, a run or two and get that under their belt. And hey, if you can sneak a place or a win, it makes it a lot easier to get into some sort of nice three-year-old races next season. So, yeah, she's still on the way up and, you know, whatever she does is going to really improve. Well, let's move on to the English Sales Cambridge Breeders Stakes now. And uh, first horse we want to touch on is Mercurial, who is at a... A, a ridiculous price, really, for what the horse has done uh, through the season. $51 and $9, and I'm sure that's indicative of just how strong this field is, Stephen. But look, when you line up Mercurial's form, I mean, he did run fourth in a Sartan here at this venue, beaten behind what Paranui Bay, Meritable and Dark Destroyer. So uh, how have you, what have you taken away from his, his recent runs, but also his form overall this spring hasn't been that bad? 
Yeah, I, I was uh, amazed to see him, the rank outsider of the field, um, back on a good track, back to set weights, wear a move back on. Um, yeah, you know, I certainly didn't expect him to be one of the favourite runners, but I think he'll go a hell of a lot better. Um, I thought last start, he just got, he jumped so good, he should have trailed up, he ended up three back defence in a bit of an awkward spot. Um, from barrier six, if we can get him out of the gates and sort of get him in that first, uh, first five and give him the run, yeah, I, I think he's definitely a lot better than his form would suggest, but it is a very smart field. It's a great race, actually. Yeah, it is. It is. It, this might be a, a cheeky top three, top four chance, and another good chance in the stable in the, for the stable on the race is La Bella Beals. Uh, boy, the horse went up to win last time, Stephen, and, and the other horses kicked back. Yeah, she won so well first up, the stepped up to the 14. Sort of a bit of a slow run race. They sort of fought a little bit the whole way. Um, and so I think that just told at the, at the end. Um, but, you know, back to the 1,200, nice draw in seven now. Uh, she'll just sit and behind the speed. And, yeah, I, I think she's uh, well above average. Um, and uh, she can certainly uh, turn her form around. Well, when I say turn her form around, she's only had two this time in for a first and a second. But, you know, I think she's a, a, a pretty big player. OK. And as you said there, tactically, you just want to want to see her just off the, off the pressure? I think there'd be a fair bit of pressure um, if she could just, you know, let a few go and just be, hey, she'll be in the first five, I would have thought. But uh, it'd be nice just to see her sort of off the bridle. Um, that's what we didn't see last time. And just getting the grouse run and, and just presented with one run, I'd, I'd be more than happy to see that. OK, well, let's move on to race number six now, Stephen. We do have Tabata in this race. And look, as we know, this is a, a stakes winning uh, a mare, uh, this runner Tabata, 16s and 4.50, 11s on the tote currently. She's had a trial to get herself uh, ready, just, just for the reasons for why we haven't seen her for, for so long? Yeah, we just decided to give her a, a good lengthy spell. Um, she sort of, her last campaign was a little bit sort of uh, indifferent, but I think she's coming up really well this time. She's taking the blinkers off, going to start from scratch. Uh, she's drawn seven. She's got to carry a fair bit of weight, but I reckon she'll go, she's probably one of the outsiders of the field. I think she'll sprint quite well fresh. Uh, probably would have rather sort of a dead five. But I think she's coming up really good, and uh, I certainly wouldn't leave her out of the top four. She could give a fair bit of cheek. OK, and then she's a, a sort of horse that you'll run through the, the, the early part or, or the latter part of autumn, looking for some forgiveness in the ground. Yeah, absolutely. She'll appreciate that after this first up run. Um, she won't have a big, a big sort of autumn, early winter. Then she'll have just maybe a little break and then uh, come back for those spring races. Move on to the Trevor Stakes now, Stephen, and you... You're rolling the dice with one with just a small field here, and you've got Rip 'em Up uh, in the race. Uh, we'll go around as uh, the outsider in the field at around $51. Uh, your thoughts on her? Look, she was never going to go for this race. When the nominations came out, we decided, hey, look, we can always go back to a, a rating 65. Um, yeah, it was uh, pretty disappointing, the nominations. So, um, look, she's drawn one. She's got Craig Grills on. She's got a, a couple of ticks there, but um, yeah, it does look a, you know, she might be out of her, you know, she's out of her depth a bit, but why not have a roll of the dice? Yeah, and look, you've got a barrier draw where you might get a soft run and uh, could run uh, not too far off the, the, the top three of the big guns in the race. And your last runner, Stephen, is Secret Show, who lines up in race number nine, a horse who has gone forward in the last couple of starts. He's a wide barrier draw here for this race. Uh, how do you line up him after his two runs this prep? Yeah, he'll, he'll go forward again. Uh, shame he's drawn out a little bit. Matt, good strong rider, pump him out. Um, I think he'd probably be better off uh, when he gets to 2,000 metres. I, I think he'll get the 2,000. Um, so today might not be his day, but maybe sort of that dead to slow track over 2,000 metres might be one to follow. OK, what's uh, what's the one you, you're pinpointing as the one for the day? I'd love to think maybe we could kick off with uh, Dubai Diva might be the one. All right, before we let you go, Stephen, just around... Uh, a team heading towards Queensland. I suppose the first question is Hoard the Bourbon. After the championship stakes uh, in Hoard the Bourbon, what, what's the plan with him now? Heading, is he going to Queensland or what's the plan no. with him? No, he missed the, missed the flight. Um, we're just going to give him one more, bring him back to a mile, just run him in a just a normal um, race over a mile. Then he'll spell and come back for the uh, for the spring, probably just a bridge too far, sort of going 14, 16, straight up to the 2100. Um, but we do think he's, um, we do think he's very good, and he'd be certainly, a, you know, I'd say he'd be one of our um, top horses in the stable uh, next season. That's for sure. Okay, so what uh, what are you sending? Is, are you sending uh, a couple of horses over? Yeah, so they arrived yesterday. We sent Shikana over. She's kicking off on uh, Wednesday the 11th, just over 1800 at the Gold Coast. 
uh, El Vencedor and Iconic Star went over. They'll both run on the 14th. Uh, Iconic Star, she runs a, a, in a mere sprint, and then she'll be sold about eight days later um, at the Gold Coast. Now, El Vencedor kicks off in a three-year-old 1350. But, yeah, they've all arrived yesterday. Uh, they've had a little canter this morning, and all arrived safe and sound. So looking forward to getting their campaigns underway over there. Gee, El Vencedor's uh, really come back strongly, Stephen. Those last couple of victories have been good from the horse. Uh, things look nicely set up for a, for a Brisbane campaign for that runner. Absolutely. I mean, last preparation, we potentially thought he was our um, you know, best three-year-old. And he was just did a few things wrong. But this... he won extremely well um, two starts back. And then last start, three wide, no cover. And, and still kicked uh, extremely good against the older horses. And and red in good time, and yeah, he, he is smart, and uh, he's settling well over there early doors, so hopefully he can um, sort of match it with a better class of three-year-old over there. Nice one. All right, Stephen, we'll look out for those runners over the next few weeks, and, and all the best with, with your team today. Thanks, BP. Cheers, mate. Good man. That's uh, Stephen Marsh there chatting about uh, his team and liking Dubai Diva uh, as his best, which lines up in race number one. We'll take a break here on the Punters Lounge. More to come on the other side. Welcome back to the Punters Lounge. We're now going to talk to uh, the assistant trainer out of uh, Tiago, and that is Sam Burgesson, who's uh, about to chat about the team. Good morning to you, Sam. Uh, nice team of runners, uh, and no doubt the team are looking forward to a big day in front of them. Hey, BP. Yeah, cheers for having me. Um, yeah, a nice, um, even sort of competitive day, I thought. Um, and, yeah, with a bit of luck, hopefully, you know, we can find a winner somewhere. All right, well, let's uh, see if we can find those winners. Uh, we start the day off in race number two with... Uh, Summer Monsoon, a horse who's come up in the market at around sixes and two dollars and ten cents. He's drawn uh, an inside barrier draw. Uh, what sort of chance do we give Summer Monsoon? Yeah, the old boy. Um, sort of forget the run at Hastings last start. Uh, sort of off the bridle the whole way, um, and never really settled into a good pattern of breathing. Um, from the one draw, uh, he's sort of the horse you got to ride pretty quiet. Um, just let him relax. Um, yeah, get into that rhythm of breathing, like I said, and um, hopefully he'll be running on late with Opion. It looks to be a race where there's going to be the, some speed in the race at least, so if that means if he can relax with, with pressure up front, he, he might be able to uh, to roll over the top and run a good race. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully a few of them spend a bit of energy early. Um, and yeah, like, like you say, from the barrier one, you know, he shouldn't have to do too much. Let's move on to the two-yard race now, Sam, where we do see a couple of interesting runners here. And first of all, we'll touch on uh, Lord Cosmos. Now, he is the second favourite uh, at a quote of $3.30. He competed in the Karaka Million uh, at his last race day start. He's had a most recent trial over the 1,000 metres and some pretty good takeaways from this trial, wasn't it, Sam? A horse who just sat off them and, and was able to roll over the top and, and, and win his trial nicely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really impressive trial at Taupo. Sort of surprised us a bit. He's such a... Um laid back horse at home but we obviously know he's got the ability um yeah forget the crack a million run um drawn through the outside got back and was never in it um he's drawn a sort of a sticky gate again uh so we'll probably look to ride him back and hopefully he finishes off like he did at new plymouth yeah that would be the ideal situation wouldn't it be where he's drawn out there in, in the car park uh lucky you've got opie Boston to try and work that problem out uh, sam what about the other runner in shanghai tang a runner that does come with a very good trial next to her name too she's a daughter uh, of Savabil. she sat outside lead and she put them away by two and three quarters yeah um a very interesting runner um only had the two trials um and like you said was really impressive at taupo last week um she's a pretty raw filly um but we've got a lot of time for her going forward she'll develop into a lovely three-year-old um you'll see in the bird cage today still you know, she's got a great frame. She just needs to sort of fill into it a bit. But she should hopefully get a nice run from that soft gate. Um, and she's definitely got the ability. So, yeah, um, a very interesting runner. She naturally showed some trial speed there, Sam, to be able to posse up outside leader. What do you believe in terms of, of race speed that she has to be able to make use of that barrier draw? Yeah, look, she seems to do everything right. Um, and it's pretty tractable. So hopefully um, Joe can just put her in there just in behind the speed with a bit of cover and, you know, present at the top of the straight. All right, then, let's move on to the first of our features, Sam, the English Sales Cambridge Breeders Stakes 
Group 3 and the team do hold a strong hand in the race because you do have the favourite in Coat the Bone but also other runners including Ragamuffin, White Our Cove, Shepherd's Delight and Synchronise. So it'll be a, a pedal down for the team here getting the team, uh, getting the horses ready for this one but let's go to the favourite first of all Sam in Coat the Bone. He, he had to work off a wide gate. Uh, he had 59 and a half kilos and he still gets the job done against some key opposition. Yeah, luck was a, a massive win last start. Like you said, tough from the outside barrier. Um, he just sort of keeps ticking the boxes, um, keeps taking the next step. Uh, it's obviously a very competitive field today. Um, you know, some really class horses in there, so look, he'll need to step up. Um, but soft gate, uh, Opie on, and uh, he'll roll forward and sort of put himself there. It was around a month between runs that race that we saw there a couple of weeks ago from his effort out of Trentham so how's the progress uh, been going into this race? Yeah look he seems to have trained on well um, he did a nice piece of work uh, on the plough here with Wairau Cove on Tuesday um, and Opie uh, rode him and was really happy with him so look we think he's gone the right way since. All right well let's talk about some of the other runners in the race. Ragamuffin's a horse that uh, I know took a lot of market support leading into that race there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, finished into seventh position. Uh, look, he's drawn out wide. Uh, how do you rate his chances? Yeah, he sort of probably got a bit far back um, last start from a soft gar um, barrier. Sort of got the shuffle back and then um, ran on OK. Um, it's probably not... The run was better than probably what it looks. Um, yeah, like you said, wide barrier. Uh, he needed a lot of luck from there. He'd probably roll forward. Um, try and get some cover somewhere, if not outside the leader, something like that. Um, like we're sort of just finding out with him. Um, you know, it's a competitive field, like I said before. Uh, but yeah, he'll need a lot of luck from out there, I think. Gee, I thought White Our Cove was a horse that looks to be progressive. Look, one of those runners that caught the eye last time to the races, barnstorming finish. He's just been one of those horses, Sam, that has created that impression in a small sample size. So he has a good barrier draw. This is a, a line in the sand race to, for him this afternoon. But uh, what's the overall thoughts around this runner? Yeah, um, really like him. Um, we've thought, so I've always liked him. He's um, a good a good chance from a soft gate. Uh, Hopefully she'll get a nice sort of soft run in behind the speed there, if not maybe a little bit further back with Joe on. Um, obviously up in get grade, uh, and his work on Tuesday with, was, with Coke de Boone was super. Um, yeah, can't fault him. All right, and Shepherd's Delight. I, I thought one of the runs uh, from the horses closing in that race two weeks ago, Sam, and we know that she's a horse at 1,600 metres. She excels. She's been group one placed at that distance in a 1,000 guinea. So is she a, a sharp improver second up for this race? Yeah, for sure. She's probably one that was looking for 1,400, but we've kept her nice and fresh for today. Um, uh, another with a sticky barrier as well, actually. So um, we're probably going to have to go back and uh, look for some cover somewhere. And, yeah, we'll probably need a little bit of luck. All right. And, and yeah, thoughts on Synchronise as well, the other runner for the team? Yeah, uh, her trials were super, um, at Avondale and Metameta. Um, just flew with it, yeah, a really sharp turn of foot. Um, and it's a good opportunity to obtain some black type. Um, and another, and unfortunately, another bill needs some luck from the draw. I think um, we'll look to go midfield somewhere, and um, hopefully, she'll be finishing off late. Well, the times that she has won, Sam, uh, she certainly looks above average, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Philly, we've always had a lot of time for. Um, you know, the Silver Bill Phillies, we love them. So, look, um, she's a, uh, I think, over the odds, um, a good, a rough each way chance. Yeah, and as you said, you're going to need the luck with some of those horses that are drawn out wide, but if there's a bit of pressure on and the jockeys can find their right positions, those sort of closes can be a chance in the race. Let's move on to race number six now, Sam. Uh, a couple of runners here. Uh, at the top of the book, you've got Chella at 8.52.80. Uh, Yuto Kamagai claims the four kilograms, which will be a massive assistance uh, to his chances. Aromatic 5.52.10. Uh, look, she did chase her Maliston last preparation, so she is a... Uh, a loose favourite uh, in the race, uh, and then you've also got Highborn, uh, who's at eight dollars at the ma in the market currently. Let's first of all go to Chella, uh, who was in that most recent trial around Matamata on the 20th of April, when uh, Sword of State was able to claim him uh, in the concluding stages. Is he in a position where he's he's a chance of winning this race? Yeah, for sure. He's um, another with a bad draw, um, but will go forward um, and put himself there. He seems to jump jump away from the barrier as well. Um, He's a, sort of a good horse for an apprentice because he sort of does it all for you. So hopefully he can get across for, from the wide barrier. Um, and his trials have been really good. So, look, can't fault him. 
Aramatic uh, was also in that same trial that we've just shown uh, when beaten in behind sort of state. Look, look, she ran some really good races last season. As I said, she bumped into Malaston, who we've all seen what we, that horse has been able to do, you know, winning a ritual and then performing well first up in Australia. So uh, she has a, a niggly barrier draw, but what's the expectation with her first up? Look, she, yeah, she's capable of running a, um, a tricky race. Uh, Opion always helps and has a pretty good fresh record. Um, but, yeah, she's probably looking for fo further. Um, she'll definitely improve with it. But, yeah, capable of running a tricky race. All right, and the last of the team in the race is Highborn. She's a Savabil uh, mare. Now, she lets her doubt herself down at times with, with a, a slow getaway, but, boy, she knows how to round them in and, and put in a devastating turn of foot late. This is her last run when finishing uh, into second position in the times that she's won. She's been rocketing home, so just need that piece of luck with her. Yep, yep, for sure. Another with a sticky gait, uh, but Joe knows her well, and she's racing in really good form. Um, so, yeah, she should have to be an each race chance for sure. All right, and this is her run last time to the races when finishing on into second position at Awapuni. We'll move on to your last run now, Sam, uh, and we do see Navalha line up in this race. Goes up to 1,600 metres. Uh, bookmakers have this as the favourite at $2.50, and there's been money for the horse. Uh, and that's a key component, isn't it, for this runner, getting up to 1,600 metres. Things just didn't quite pan out at a crucial stage in that race at Tadapa, over 1,400 metres last time to the races. Drops a kilo to 60 kilograms, so... Uh, things all look nicely placed for him to go a big race. Yeah, for sure. It was a um, good run last uh, two weeks ago here. Um, sort of got held up, like you said, at the crucial stage. And Opie said with the weight, he just sort of couldn't sprint and the race was gone and the winner had just got the kick on him. Um, it should be hard to beat. It's just the mile's probably the only query. He's never, he's never gone gone that far. Um, but if he does, um, if he does get the trip, yeah, look, he looks really hard to beat on paper. Mm. And the indications are there. He certainly ran through the line, didn't he, with that big weight uh, over the 1,400 metres. Looking at the sectionals, he ran the fastest, the second fastest last uh, six, four and two in that race. So it's all about him getting to the mile, which is the unknown uh, heading into the race. Yeah, for sure. Like you said, he did attack the line well um, and he tends to be a, a little bit slow away. So, look, over a, a longer distance, that should really help him. Um, but yeah, he, um, yeah, he should be very competitive. All right, Sam, we'll put you on the spot. Is there, is there one there that you're liking uh, this afternoon? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, look, obviously, like I've said, um, um, and a lot of the runners will need a bit of luck. It looks like a competitive day. Um, I'd probably go Navelha in the last, but if you want a, uh, you know, a bit of uh, value, uh, synchronise in the, um, in the Cambridge Breeders looks well over the odds. OK, yeah, at around the $18 mark. We're always looking for value, Sam. Uh, just quickly, too, on a, a Brisbane team, uh, just update on the, on the horses that are heading to Queensland. Uh, yeah, so Soprano Supreme, uh, sort of state on Entrevier, they uh, arrived in Brisbane um, late yesterday afternoon. They had a nice trot and candor this morning, um, and the team there are happy with how they've settled in. Um, so sort of state uh, and Soprano Supreme, they run next Saturday the 7th. Um, and then on Trivia a week later. So, yeah, really looking forward to them um, kicking off their campaigns. It's an exciting time for the team. Absolutely. Three nice horses to be taking. Soprano Supreme is one of those horses um, that's, that's sort of low in the ratings, needs some dollars to be able to maybe try and find some of those better races later on through the carnival. Yeah, for sure. Um, look, she's just kept improving this prep. She's obviously surprised us sort of like at the start of the campaign. You wouldn't, we wouldn't have thought we would have got to where we are. Um, but yeah, she's been super impressive, whatever she's done, especially those last two starts. Um, and yeah, looks a progressive filly. All right, Sam. Well, thanks for your time as always here on, on the Punters Lounge and, uh, and good luck this afternoon. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me. Good man. That's uh, assistant trainer there out of Tiako and uh, Sam Burgesson talking about uh, their big team of runners out of the Cambridge race meeting and liking the Valha in synchronise at a nice each way at around the $18. We'll take a break here on the Punters Lounge and on the other side we'll catch up with jockey Ellen Nicholas.
two good guests so far on the Punters Lounge. We've had Stephen Marsh, who was keen to push Dubai Diva uh, as his best in race number one, and Navalha from Sam Burgesson. And I can tell you, both of those runners are market movers. Uh, Dubai Diva, 350 into a quote of $3. And if you go to race number eight there, Navalha, 280 into $2.50. I, I can see where Sam's coming from with the... Uh, 1,600 metres being a slight concern, but the way that the horse ran through the line, 1,400 metres, and 1,600 metres looks ideally suited for the horse now heading into the last race of the day. And boy, they do have a strong hold on the Cambridge Breeders too with Cote de Bone, the favourite. Synchronised, hovering around that $18, one that Sam was liking on the each way. Well, we're now going to move to the River City and have a look at the races at Whanganui, and a jockey that has a good book of rides there today uh, is uh, Alan Nicholas. Alan, uh, a very good morning to you. Hi, good morning. A nice winner yesterday to be able to kick the confidence off leading into uh, this afternoon. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Calpurnia did the job be beautifully uh, on uh, yesterday's race meeting. Well, let's move on to uh, your book of rides. And in the first race, uh, you've got a ride here by the name of Tap Dancer. It sits at around $16 and three fifty dollars uh, to your affiliate by Preferment. You've picked up the ride here for Craig Ival. Have, have you heard anything from the team about what they're expecting from this horse today? Um, yeah, I think she um, she just wants uh, a good run. Um, she got caught a bit wide on the last start, so I think just m maybe a bit, a bit more of like an economical run, she could get home a bit better. Okay, then, yeah, so it lines up at a big price in that race. Let's move on to uh, race number three on the programme. Uh, Comso Como is a runner that you pick up here for Ian Marks. We'll go around uh, from barrier number four at a big price, 51s and 7s. So, uh, again, a, a horse that needs that little bit of improvement on recent racing. Yeah, um, her, her race days haven't been great, but she actually won a 500 metre trial. Um, I think it was, it was the time for her last start. So, hopefully, if she jumps well um, and maybe we could sit in the trial, she might, she might, might run a cheeky place. <laughs> All right, then, yeah, so 51s and 7s for that runner. Move on to race number four now, Ellen, and this is a horse by the name of Miss Sailor who was able to win last time to the races, and it was here at this venue. Uh, sits at 12s and $3.50, and your claim's going to help uh, her chances too, but uh, certainly off the video with how the horse won last time to the races, uh, it looks to be a nice ride. Yeah, um, I know it's a rating 65 now, not a maiden, but I'd say, like, she's Three kilos is going to help her, and also, um, like like you said, one last start on this track at this going same distance. So hopefully a repeat performance. Yeah, absolutely, and in similar type of track conditions on, on this occasion, it was a soft seven uh, on this day, and the track is rated in the soft five. And yeah, that's Miss Sailor uh, for Peter Didham, who had a great day out at that race meeting back on the seventh of April. Move on to your next ride, Alan, in race number five, and it is just ask me. And this is uh, one of a couple of rides that you have for the day for Alan Sharrick. Eights and two dollars and fifty cents. Now his form would tell us that he's going to need it wetter, uh, but he does have a fresh up record at the same time. Yeah, um, he's got a good fresh up record, but last last start he won over a mile, and a couple of starts before that being fourteen. So I wonder if the thirteen would just be um, short of his best, but we'll just have to see later on, I guess. He certainly is a high class horse because I mean he's a runner that's been a stakes winner and and you know out of the right barn of Alan Sharrick. So look, he's. Yeah. He's a, he's a good chance, at all, all despite all those things that you said. Really, um, really like looking forward to the ride in him because he's a, like you said, he's an absolute class horse. So, all right, we'll move on to your other ride that you have for Alan, and I'm really keen to get your thoughts on this one because he does look to be a nice horse going through the grades in race number six, and that's Tab Attack. But boy, this horse was impressive when winning. Uh, two starts ago by nearly five lengths at Trentham and then backed it up again by beating the mighty Spa at Awapuni. Quote of $3.20. I bet you're excited about riding this one. Yeah, really excited. Um, I know he's got weight, but if you actually look at it, he won um, with 59 on his last start and he's only carrying 57.5 on my claim today. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed for a, for a good show with him because I know he's drawn out, but it, he, he gets back, so, so that's OK. Have, have you spoken to, to Alan Sherrick uh, about both of these horses? No, not yet. I'll speak to him later on today. You, you mentioned the barrier draw, and that, that's certainly a, a, a touch, touch niggly, but as you said, he's a horse who likes to get back and really has that good turn of foot at the end of his races. Yeah, it'd, it'd be different if he, if he needed to lead or something like that, but he's not that type of horse, so I think we're OK there. All right, well, let's talk about the polar opposite uh, of that because you've got Big Mike coming up in race number seven and he certainly doesn't like going back. He likes going forward and rolling along and 
Uh, he's at 4.20. Uh, how's his progress been, Alan? I mean, he's an older yeah. horse now, but he's a horse that, look, if, he, if he's at his best, he's, he's very hard to peg back. And off his recent trial, you would say that maybe he is close to his best again. Yeah, 100%. And uh, I have to correct you. Yesterday you said he was, you, he, he was your number one fan. I have to correct you and say that I'm his number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can be his number one fan. You're riding the horse, Ellen, so that's all right. I'll produce another T-shirt with I Love Big Mike and I'll give you one I'll give one to you as well. Um, so how's he done? How's he, how's he done yeah, since he's... his most recent start? He's in great form. Um, he's been he's been down at um, Waverley going up the hills with Ann and Harvey Wilson. And um, I think it's just, honestly, like he's grown another leg from it and he looks amazing. He feels amazing. Just hopefully he goes back to his old form because like, he can run great times over that distance. And um, I know like Hawke's Bay is his favourite place, but like, so th this track's not, not too different, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that's right, and, and he likes uh, he likes a little bit of forgiveness, doesn't he? He doesn't he doesn't like it wet, uh, but he likes just that, that little bit of help in the ground, which you, by the looks of it, going to get there this afternoon with a soft five. Yeah, I'd say it would be perfect for him. Um, he like oh, being an older horse, he just likes having a bit of a sting out the ground. Um, yeah, he does, doesn't he? All right, well, let's move on to oh, Ellen. Still there? You still there, Ellen? Yep. Can oh, yep, sorry, it? thought the yep. phone cut out then. That's all right. All right let's move on to your last ride, uh, and it is Enchanted Al. And this is a horse by Jackalbury who won nicely to the races, sitting at 14s and 4.20 currently. Again, your weight relief is going to help the horse. You were aboard when winning at Hawke's Bay. It's never easy to go from that maiden grade to a 65, but um, I certainly like the way that she put them away at Hawke's Bay. Yeah, she's um, she's actually a full sister to hit the road, Jack, that... Um, the feelings also train and I think that they're one of those horses that maybe take a little while to mature but um, I actually think she's probably um, maturing quicker than her brother <laughs> um, and she was really impressive last start like she um, she just settled nicely in the race and she's got like a really manageable attitude so it's kind of makes life a bit easier um, you can produce her when you want to so um, I've, yeah I've, I'd say she'd be right there about some surprise she's paying so much to be honest. You hit the road jacks, one of those horses that you know you, you can get rolling on and, and really put into the race, and that was almost similar to what you did there over the 1600 metres. So, what are you sort of wanting to do here tactically over 2060 metres, uh, the first time over this distance, this prep? Yeah, well, um, I wouldn't like to produce her as as early as I had to do over the um, over the last start, but um, the way the way that, that that she races, like she like she doesn't like pinging the gates, so just leave her alone and. Um, as long as, as she's a grinding away type horse, but but she, she never gives up sort of thing. So um, as long as she's there about at the top of the straight, I couldn't, couldn't see her stopping on you over 2,000 metres because I'd, I'd say this is the distance she wants, really. OK, all right. Um, out of your, your team of runners here today, uh, Ellen, in, in your book of rides, uh, what are you most looking forward to in terms of maybe a, a strong winning chance? I think you can answer that one. <laughs> 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 I'll start printing the t-shirts off Ellen and uh, we'll get one in the mail to you uh, I love Big Mike uh, thanks for your time Ellen and, and all the best today sounds good thank you <laughs> Ellen Nicholas here chatting about her team of runners uh, with Big Mike uh, the one that she's liking and has been a mover in the market to around $4.20 we'll take another break here on the Punters Lounge and on the other side we'll catch up with Sam Collins Rocking and rolling into our Saturday of racing and not too far away from that first race, which is 18 minutes past 12. Let's have a look at the bonus back for you and it is just a little bit different because we are covering more race meetings uh, with the first three races from these venues. Tarapa, Whanganui, Invercargill, Eagle Farm, Morfittville and Hawkesbury. And if you want to be betting on the Invercargill harness, well, we're only two and a half minutes out from Diamonds Day at Ascot Park. That's over on TAB Trackside 2. So an opportunity to start playing into some bonus back opportunities there in the first three races. 
pretty sure the whale was pr quite strong on one there on the whale watch uh, in that first race also. With Love in the Port, the favourite in that first out of Invercargill at 2.20. So that's about to go shortly uh, in two and a half minutes. Now we're just having a few issues trying to contact uh, Sam Collett uh, out of Brisbane. Of course, some really good rides uh, for Sam with the Carnival, of course, upcoming. And their feature race, of course, does include uh, Dark Destroyer in the uh, Queensland Guineas. Uh, that goes at two minutes past five. Okay, so we'll just uh, hold there with Sam Collett, and we might have this opportunity now uh, to get to Bevan Sweeney. Uh, Bevan, a very good morning to you as we uh, gear up for your race meeting. Uh, you've got them all jotted down. You're ready for a, for a good day? Yeah, they're all jotted down. Whether they're right, PP, is always the question when you're in this uh, particular gig. We've got a couple of uh, nice uh, open handicaps on the programme there uh, at the River City. And there's a couple of really nice races early on in the programme. The two-year-old's got a lot of interest. There's a, a horse that's been on speed and kicking. That's always a play at Wanganui against the horse has come from well off them. That has been well played. Uh, and look, the 74 12 is also a pretty exciting race. It's a real form race for what is to come uh, throughout the winter. But those two open handicaps with those two very heavy top weights, uh, BP, have given a couple of horses that have been carrying top weights a really good opportunity today. All right, well, let's move on to race number five, the first race we are going to preview the Open Handicap over 1360. We spoke to Ella Nicholas about this race with her ride aboard Just Ask Me, who's at $8.50. Got three runners that are uh, in the market here, Bevan, as favourites at $5.50. Boy, this is a, a tough one to work out. How did you narrow this race down? Here today. Oh, look, it was a very good uh, run behind Johnny John, who... Surprised me at Hastings how quick this horse was out of the barriers and how it just kept on rolling. That stumpy in behind them carried 61 kilos on this occasion. Today gets in with 53 and a half and puts up a very good performance up along the inside. Prior to this, was beaten four lengths behind. Can I get a name in with 60 kilos uh, on its back? Prior to that, was carrying an absolute caravan as well. So today, when this was getting with the 53 kilos, it's got a very good draw on it today. A young apprentice who has very kind hands, in my opinion, should suit Stumpy. He has been going brilliantly all season, this particular horse. He's got a good draw, and for the first time this season, BP has a weight, I think, that can make uh, Stumpy be very, very competitive. Look, time's ticking. I've heard a few whispers out of the wider wrapper uh, that time's ticking is going well, and I, uh, we all know how well he went last preparation. He was in some very, very good form. I've been a fan of Lincoln's Cruise. He's sneaking with the 54, but he's probably in the right sort of grade for him. And look, it'll be interesting to see how Colorado Star returns to the races. We know his abilities. He has got a good uh, record fresh. Of course, he had a very good campaign uh, last season, Colorado Star. So it is a really nice open sprint. Look, I think Just Ask Me, that rating will have to come down. Is he an open Aki Cup, Winter Cup type of horse again this season? I think there's a race in the north as well that Alan's got uh, marked out uh, for him as well. So maybe expect him to hit the line strongly without really threatening the winner here today. So I've gone with the weight special, I think, BP. 53 and a half with Stumpy. I think it's a very good play in race number five. All right, let's move on now to race number seven, the open over 2,060 metres uh, and a market where... Look, it's very strong around Big Mike. He's five fifty to four dollars uh, and twenty cents. And as we saw with, uh, with the bookmakers, a market mover with them also uh, for the day. Uh, Al Hal Mary at four fifty one seventy five. Hunter Pence at five fifty and two dollars uh, is a horse you have to keep on side because of the clear reference of loving the joint. Sue Nate at seven dollars and Kelly Co at five dollars and fifty cents. Uh, the seventh for you, Bevan. I thought this was a tricky race. Uh, we all love Big Mike, let's be fair. He's just going to get out there and roll, and uh, he's uh, raced nicely enough uh, at this sort of grade over a long, long period of time, so why not? Uh, three kilos coming off him gives him the 59 kilos, which probably is quite a nice sort of position in the weight so for him. Look, I've had a big opinion of the eight here in Kelly Co for a long period of time. Really, really nice horse, this BP. Uh, again, we'll run around in the O'Leary colours. But the last couple of runs, thought it was a good effort behind Tabra Attack. That's a real strong form line in the central districts. And things just didn't go right behind. He's a doozy to Trent them. The track, I think, there was just getting a little bit too much on the firm side. So I think the track condition should suit today. 
She's getting a five kilo pull on the weights. I think she's heading straight to sort of good, strong, open handicap grade and might be a horse that we'll see in a winter cup or some uh, type of race like that. So I went with her on top, but I'll also be having a bit on Big Mike. He's in for second. Oh, hail Mary. Look, she's just been a little bit disappointing, hasn't she, uh, this preparation? We know she's got all the ability, but maybe she is looking for the broodmare paddock. And look, Hunter Pence, he went fantastic at Awapuni. Uh, Jonathan went on him last start, and I, I don't think they just combined well, because he was, albeit with the top weight, a little bit disappointing. So Prentice gets on him today and takes a couple of kilos off his back down to the 55. But 8, 1, 1 and 8, I'll be playing both of those in the second of our features, BP. Alrighty, okay, well let's um, get some suggested bets from you, Bevan, and do you remember 17 years ago you asked me for 100 bucks and we took a poke of three and four at Trentham when I had my first week of work at Trackside and that just went down the dunny, so I'm going to give you another $100 here, Bevan, and hopefully we can turn it into something, so what are we going to do? Gee, well, that'll be the last time we gave anyone 100 bucks 17 <laughs> oh, years ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> race three, to see up Prince uh, for uh, the Orets. Uh, he was really good down south. He raced really gr greenly. Uh, Art de Triomphe was the horse that uh, beat him on that occasion. He had a really quiet trial. I think he goes very, very close to winning. You'll be able to tell me, if we're getting this even vaguely right, uh, BP, Arish, Arish, and race yep. number four, the 10. Yep. Uh, this horse clearly comes out of a very strong form race. Uh, it's not devoid of form, that race, uh, but the draw is perfect and the form's perfect to say. It should be winning there. And I think Stumpy's a value bet. And in honour of the man who collected, what was it, 755000 or something uh, that I was reading about on Twitter with a straight four quaddy multi, all sorts of carry-on in the back of beyond, and he picked up 750,000. <laughs> We're going to take any three uh, multi uh, today. We'll have Tavra Tech in there, we'll have uh, Stumpy in there, Arish, Arish, uh, and Shasir Prince, and any three get up. I think if all four get up, we get three and a half, something like that, BP, but you'll get a click if any three get up. But so, In his honour, we're doing something a little bit different uh, for the selections for the $100 bet this afternoon. <laughs> nice. I might, might, might have a play. might um, transfer some money to you, Bevan, uh, and we'll have a go. All right, uh, thanks for that, and um, <laughs> we'll, we'll catch up shortly with uh, Bevan Sweeney out of uh, Batoni. Right, we'll take another break here, and uh, fingers crossed, we'll catch up with Sam Pollock. Welcome back to the Punters Lounge. It's time to head across to Tasman. And a jockey that's riding in superb form around Brisbane is Sam Collett. Uh, good morning to you, Sam. Hey, BP. How's it going? Yeah, pretty good, thanks. And, uh, boy, your form at the moment, you must be really happy, especially moving into an important time, uh, carnival uh, time around Queensland. Yeah, things are ticking over nicely. It probably took me sort of four weeks, six weeks to, you know, sort of find where I was sort of best to ride my work and sort of base myself and um, establish some good connections. I'm getting a really good bit of support now. I said things are picking along really, really nicely. I've got some nice rides today and I could hopefully that can all lead into the, the winter carnival and we just keep going from there. All right, well, let's uh, kick it off now, Sam, in your first ride in race number two. And a runner that does come with up and running form uh, by the name of he is three eighty and a dollar fifty. Uh, he's won around uh, Ipswich and Doombin over the 1,300 and 1,600 metres. Moves to the 18.25, but uh, can't knock his winning form, the son of Piero. No, not at all. Like, Lee's done a really good job of placing this horse's first up run uh, and win at Ipswich was solid. He got a really nice run in transit that day. Um, Tegan Harrison rode him again last start. You know, another lovely ride. He's drawn a nice soft barrier today. Like, the step up and trip's not going to be a problem for him. Um, He's been taking the line really well in his runs. And he's the kind of horse who seems pretty versatile on his racing pattern. He can sort of hop away and, and be thereabouts and just sort of switch off and save that little bit of gas. But the race looks nice and, you know, like a nice stepping stone for him to produce another good run. All right, that's he is in race number two. We'll move on to your next ride, Sam, which is in race number three. Uh, Coeur Royale, now this one uh, for Chris Waller and uh, a couple of rides for Chris throughout the day. This is a horse uh, that was campaigning through Sydney and as having uh, her first up run this preparation out of the Gold Coast stable of Chris Waller. Favourite at three twenty and dollar thirty-five with, with a good barrier draw. Yeah, she looks like a really speedy filly. Um, 
after the nights off, Barry assured her help her here. Obviously, she's unknown and Eagle Farm, and as we know, Eagle Farm can be a little bit of a tricky surface for some horses. Don't always like it, but she, they, obviously, they wouldn't have brought her up if they didn't think that she was, you know, on a path to some good things. And it looks like a really nice race for her to kick off her winter campaign here. She obviously had a. Um, you know, great form and a nice draw. Um, there doesn't look to be a whole lot of speed in that race, so I sort of see her close to running, obviously, without talking to Chris. Um, she looks like she, she should be a really good ride today. OK, all right, we'll, we'll keep tabs on that one. Let's move on to race number five now, Sam, and uh, Al's pal's gal is the ride you've got here in the two-year-old race, the two-year-old filly by uh, Spirit of Boom. Uh, this is a horse uh, that will be presented at 41s and $6, uh, but you do have the aid of the inside gate. Yeah, she's a filly I've had a little bit to do with now. Um, the one draw definitely helps her. She's not very big in stature, but she doesn't think that. It's a pretty hot field. Um, I mean, I couldn't see her racing sort of in the first three, you know, three horses. I think they're going to go too fast for early. But she's tracked well enough that she should hop away from that draw. And as long as they get a, a nice enough run, um, I think she can run well. Like I said, it's a really hot bunch, but just, she really deserves a chance to be there. She's hardly put in a poor performance. OK, then. So it goes around at the big prize, Sal's Pals Gal in race number five. Move on to the sixth on the programme, Sam. And this is a race where you do uh, ride a fresh-up runner, and that is uh, Who's Your Dealer? at 752.70. This one for Lee Friedman, a horse we haven't seen since the spring. Uh, what's the thoughts there, and, and what have you heard around uh, his chances here this afternoon to start a done deal? Yeah, he's um, new to Lee Stable. I think he was previously with Tony Gollan. Um, he's a horse I've trialled. He trialled really well at the Gold Coast a few weeks back. His work's been, you know, really good. He's shown us plenty. He's obviously had a lot of ability. I think he won his first two starts from memory. Uh, he's won at Eagle Farm too, which definitely helps him. He's drawn one. He's a horse that doesn't look like he's got a whole lot of early speed. He sort of likes to find his feet. Um, so like, I'd be really disappointed if he didn't run a really good race today. Right, OK. And that was the trial victory just saw there out of the Gold Coast most recently. Who's your dealer from an inside gate? Uh, move on to race number seven. Uh, a bit of New Zealand interest here around this runner and Antonio Giovanni at 26 and $6. This is the uh, Queensland Guineas, uh, drawn out in barrier number 11. Does come into this race as a last start winner and another horse from uh, Chris's Sydney barn that's uh, made its way to, to Queensland. Yeah, look, the sticky barrier draw doesn't help him much, but going back through his runs, he's, when he ran second at Randwick, he oh, must have been a few starts back now. My last prep, maybe James got a long way back on him from the off draw, and he really monstered home that day. Um, I'm not too sure. Like I think he's probably going to settle back with the midfield and look to get home really well. He's in form. He had a really nice soft win last start before heading up here, but the barrier draw does make things a wee bit tricky. He's just going to have to look to get a bit of cover. OK, let's move on to race number eight now. Sam, this is uh, the group two over the 1,200 metres and you have a nice ride here in Ranch Hand who does go around at a big price at 18s and 4.50 but, boy, the, the three-year-old colt by Fastnet Rocky has come up against some, some class animals uh, and he's a runner that uh, is out of the Chris Waller barn. We'll take you back a couple of starts ago uh, when he was able to run second behind Paul Laley. He's been beaten behind Animo and his last start was in the Australian Guineas behind Hitotsu. Yeah, look, he's a horse I've actually had a chance to have a little bit of a sit on. Um, his work on Tuesday up at Eagle Farm with his stable mate was superb. I was really happy with it. He seems to have travelled up in great order. He's a horse that's been up here before. He's um, previously run well at Eagle Farm. Uh, he had a couple of runs where he, maybe things didn't go quite well last winter up here. But uh, the short trip doesn't look like it's going to worry him too much. Um, he has drawn a little bit of a sticky gate too. I'm not too sure how they'll ride him. There's a little bit of speed in it. It's a hot enough field, as you would expect. But um, I, I really like the horse. I think he's got a lot going for him. Um, had he drawn a bit of a lower gate, I'd say he's going to get a really economical run and, and he's going to be right there in the finish. But it's just going to have to see you know, how he jumps and how fast they're going and what kind of position I can get him in and, and hope to save that last run. And your last ride, uh, Sam, a horse that you've been aboard uh, the last uh, couple of starts, or certainly last time and first up this preparation, is Aidensfield at five fifty two dollars and ten cents. Uh, a horse who has uh, run well this preparation with three starts as prep for three placings. Yeah, I really think she's been looking for the step up and trip. Um, she's promised us everything in her work. She's looked like you know she should have won one this time, and she's obviously just come up. With against a couple of better horses. that She has gone wide, but she's got a really good big gate speed, which is going to help her. And She's running out of her grade, but she carries you know, the 52.5 with this true weight system, so 
it should help her. Her work's been exceptional. I can't fault it. Um, I see her, you know, obviously racing really close to speed today, and hopefully the 1400 metres is just what she's been asking for. All right. Is there, is there one you like for the day, Sam? All right. You can make a case for a few. I'd really, you know, obviously it'd be really nice to ride a winner for any of those people, but um, if I could pull one out, it'd probably be... Uh, probably the, the horse in race three, Acura Royale of Chris's um, it looks like she's meant to get a really nice run and she'd be a nice filly to stick with while she's up there. OK, then. And, and overall for you, Sam, the, the, the whole settling in period and, uh, and, and riding around Queensland, um, I mean, we're all watching back here and you're, you're kicking home the winners, but you, you, you feel fairly settled now in, in and around Queensland? Yeah, I feel like I've sort of cemented myself here and my position in the, in the jockey's rank, so everyone's welcomed me in with open arms so it's quite good um i've been here six months now it feels like it's flown by really but i'm enjoying myself and like i said i'm getting really good support and so i'll just keep keep my head down and, and keep working hard and try and keep getting the results and yeah making that money <laughs> and no doubt as we get closer to carnival time you'll start seeing a few more familiar faces from new zealand as well yeah hopefully <laughs> all right sam we'll let you go all the best today no worries thanks for having me on Cool. Thanks, Sam. That's uh, Sam Collett there chatting about her rides uh, for the day and yeah, liking a couple in the fir her first two rides for the day. He is and Coeur Royale are the ones that look to be uh, good, strong chances. And the one for Chris Waller there in Coeur Royale, uh, her best ride. All right, we'll take another break here on the Punters Lounge and we'll have a look at our feature race meeting for the afternoon. And of course, that is for the Cambridge Jockey Club out of Padaka. Last day of April and we do have our feature racing out of Tarapa for the Cambridge Jockey Club and we have the Group 3 and the Group 3 features to look forward to. The English Sales Cambridge Breeders Stakes is the first of them, race number 5. Coat the Bone favourite, two fifty and dollar thirty-five, three thirty and one seventy. He has a better barrier draw, so it's in a better place in the weights today. He has beaten some of his key opposition. But this is a stronger field than what he was up against last time to the races because when you add in uh, a horse like Bonnie Lass, even just adding Bonnie Lass to this race makes it stronger uh, because of her Group 1 form as a two-year-old twice Group 1 placed. But here is uh, the Code to Bone by a ride from Opie sitting outside leader uh, from an awkward barrier draw, holding out this late challenge from Arish Arish, who does take uh, her place out of Whanganui this afternoon. But there's some good runs from uh, other runners in behind too. I think when you line up horses like Mercurial and, and Shepherd's Delight was working through the line, you've got Ragamuffin who's in behind. Uh, those horses will just be needing that piece of luck. Uh, certainly a couple of those runners uh, that are awkwardly uh, in the barrier draws. Mikai the Bone has that opportunity of, of jumping and, and positioning up. The, the, the race is key around Sassy Merlot because Sassy Merlot didn't jump in that race and uh, was, it was out of contention uh, by, by slow away. Uh, now that horse finished into eighth position in the end uh, and was very well specced in the market. Sassy Merlot's drawn in barrier number one and, and plays a key part to the, to the speed with how she's run in some very strong races uh, throughout her three-year-old season and notable that there's been some support for that runner. Art de Triomphe as well, another horse who's raced well in the South Island, comes in with the barrier trial. Andrew Carston trains uh, as a horse who can uh, certainly make the use of the barrier draw. And then you've got other horses uh, in the race like Bonnie Lass and We Will Rock who do bring a nice little class element. We were rock beaten in the Al Manzor Trophy uh, when last to the races had a jump out. Uh, and Bonnie Lass, a horse that was uh, to the races last time when finishing into third position, uh, and it was in behind on the bubbles and I wish I win for Bonnie Lass. And uh, this was in the Mufasa Stakes uh, over the Auckland Carnival uh, where she finished into third position. Had we seen this horse drawn better, I think we would have seen a, a market a lot closer uh, between favourite, Cote de Bone, and also her and Bonnie Lass. And that just makes it a little bit tricky for her. But if she can overcome the draw, if things go her way, if something isn't quite in favour of the favourite, she is the horse you can pounce on on, on those runners just because of her pure class, uh, and that is Bonnie Lass. Look, Group 1 form stands up, doesn't it, from last season uh, with her two Group 1 placings. 
Uh, a little bit similar to We Will Rock. If We Will Rock can overcome the barrier draw, well, then he becomes a huge contender. Interesting to hear from Sam Burgess and when we did interview him about synchronised, believing that maybe that would be the value chance for the stable. Shepherd's Delight was very good from back in the field uh, two weeks ago. Uh, Coat de Bone, a lot in, in his favour, and he is the $2.50 favourite for the Cambridge Breeders Stakes. Let's move on to the other feature, and it is the Travis Stakes Group 2. Two illicit, one ninety one fifteen. Well, she's a Group 1 winner at this venue, and that was over 1,600 metres in a Captain Cook stake. She has won over 2,000 metres here as a three-year-old in a Waikato Guineas, and she is a deserved favourite. Her sectionals were, were very good in uh, the, the Thoroughbred Breeders because it was a race that didn't develop for her, really. Uh, it was almost impossible to try and beat Imperatrice with how this race uh, developed. Mid-stages... Just the, the speed evaporated from the race, and it just meant that these back markers were in really a world of pain to try and beat Imperatriz, who sat in a trailing spot, got off at the 600 at Opie Boston, and just said, come and get me if you can, and I'm pretty sure you can't get me because you're too far off me and I've got a good turn of foot. And that's how the race developed. So to elicit to 2,000 metres, if she can sit that pair or two closer to them, with a race that lacks speed, certainly does lack the pressure, uh, with maybe Charm Star playing a... A pretty decent part in the race and can be a, a huge danger in the race charm star because this is a horse who has two Group 1 placings to her name. She's been Group 1 placed in the New Zealand Oaks and of course uh, in the Queensland Oaks does uh, charm star. Bounces out of the Group 3 Manawa 2 Breeders Stakes uh, does charm star and was very good in winning this race and holding out Cinerama. Cinerama went up to the 2,000 metres and produced her best effort over this distance. Uh, she was another runner that ran fifth in a Herbie Dyke over this distance here at this venue, did Cinerama. And then you've got Zola Express, who does bring uh, form from two starts ago, winning an Awapuni Gold Cup, and sort of just got knocked around in that race a couple of weeks ago in the Thoroughbred Breeders uh, when finishing into seventh position. Did like to elicit, though, and the punters do as well, uh, sitting around that 190 quote. Uh, around to elicit. She was superb in the Thoroughbred Breeders when closing off the second fastest sectionals uh, in the race over the distance of 8, 6, 4 and 2 uh, when last presented in the Thoroughbred Breeders. Uh, Charm Star might be that horse who can play a good Quinella exacta uh, chance uh, if the horse can find that forward position uh, similar to the Manawa 2 Breeders last time to the races. In terms of a bet today, I was looking towards Navalhar in the last race as my best bet. Uh, the fearless one looks really well placed in race number four. Uh, won two over the 2,200 metres two starts ago, beating a sub winner in Hong Kong. Uh, Wild West in race number six didn't mind on the value. A horse who's drawn well and does get that opportunity of a two kilo swing in the weights on the horse who did beat Wild West in Montana Miss this afternoon. Going to play a couple of multis here uh, with the uh, fearless one, coat the bone, two illicit and the Valhar to win, and then another multi with Wild West thrown into the mixture as a place chance around the fearless one to elicit and the Valhar. All right, let's have a look at those movers for you once again before we sign off here on the Punters Lounge. And first of all, out of Tarapa, we saw that movement around Dubai Diva, three fifty into three dollars, and that was initial money. As soon as this market opened around Dubai Diva, Dawn Parade seven fifty to six dollars. Fernandez, a good trial winner out of Rukaka, elevens into eight dollars. Coat to bone, three thirty to two fifty. Sassy Merlo, fifteens to elevens. Punters just exploring a, a possible over in the marketplace with that horse having the opportunity of sitting on speed. Uh, two illicit, two ten, one nine into one ninety. And the Valhar 280 to 250. And also out of the River City, Never Fear 18s into $13. Arisha Rish 380 to 280 with that good second in behind Coat the Bone. Tap Attack 450 to 320. And Big Mike in race number seven. He is 550 into 450. Bonus back for you. And the Blitz has already started out of Ascot Park. We're up to uh, race number two down there, but we're covering six race meetings, uh, and it'll be the first three out of those six meetings. Run second, third, or fourth with your first bet with the bookmakers, up to $50 back in bonus bets. Two late quaddies to look forward to domestically, a $50,000 uh, late quaddie for the Cambridge Jockey Club, and out of the River City, a $30,000 late quaddie starting on race number five. 
Big thanks to our guests uh, throughout the day. We did catch up with uh, Stephen Marsh, where he was liking Dubai Diva. Uh, Sam Burgesson was keen on the Valha and Synchronise uh, with the two horses he uh, indicated with good, good, strong hopes. We spoke to Alan Nicholas, and Big Mike was uh, the key ride for Alan Nicholas. Uh, Sam Collett was also liking Cur Royale out of Brisbane. Big thanks to those guests. Hope you can find a winner or two. It's time to roll into Trackside Live with our first race not too far away. You're gonna find out you can't